Original accounts and sources from the 18th and 19th century talking about people using curved swords. Not just the Indian tool I like I'm holding here, but also the uh, Turkish um, uh, kilish, uh, kilik, uh, I can never say that word properly, um, also the uh, Arabic shamshir and other forms of curved sword um, are very interesting in that they often state that the thrust was not generally given with these very curved swords. Um, or at least the conventional straight thrust was not given. But some sources, and you can find um, at least a couple of these um, detailed and documented in the Swordsman of the British Empire book, that I'm, I'm often pimping on this uh, YouTube channel, um, do describe a way of giving a thrust-like um, attack that takes advantage of the curve of the blade. And I found this a very, very interesting thing, and it, it explicitly describes the essentially presenting of the sword forwards on horseback, okay, so you're, you're sat on your horse, you're riding towards your opponent, and you decide in, instead of giving, giving some kind of cut as you go past them, you're going to present the point, but you're not really presenting the point, and this is the interesting thing. If you look down my blade, what I'm actually presenting is the edge of the sword. So with a, with a pushing-like motion, and of course my horse is travelling forward, so I don't have to push with my arm, my horse does the motion for me, um, I'm actually presenting the edge to the target, not the point. And if you look along this blade, it's very interesting, many types of curved sword from the Middle East, Eastern Europe and Asia, you'll notice that there are actually many of them, not all, but many of them are more or less straight for the first third or half of the blade, much like this. So up till there, it's straight, and then it curves. And this is very interesting because it enables you to do this sort of attack whereby you can present the sword straight forwards, and it presents this second half of cutting edge at the opponent's body. Um, now what's interesting is as you're travelling towards the target, what happens is they impact with the edge there, okay, and as you travel up, there. Um, the blade will slice forwards in a push cut into the target, okay, and then as you go past, you turn the wrist, and this is described in the original source, I'll just get some more space here, you turn the wrist as you go past them, and now, what's really interesting is now the sword is at right angles to my arm, and at this point, if their neck is there, you have slid up the blade into their neck, now you're going past them, and now what happens, and this is really funky, or well, not very funky for them, but um, scientifically speaking, now the blade does a draw cut back off the same target. So half of it is a push cut, and the second half is a draw cut as you go past and your horse carries on. And what's great about this is, unlike a thrust, the blade is never going to get stuck in the opponent's body because you're sliding into it and then sliding out again as you go past. So it's actually, in that sense, it's far less likely to result in you losing the weapon or the weapon getting stuck or the weapon bending or breaking, which is documented with giving point or giving a thrust from horseback and, in fact, on foot as well, but more often on, more, more often on, on, on horseback. Um, and uh, the source in, um, in Kinsley's book, Swordsman of the British Empire, um, specifically states, uh, it's someone giving an account of this attack, and he says, many times I've seen, seen the horsemen use this kind of attack and take people's heads off in one go. Um, and you can imagine a neck is a fairly, actually, uh, soft target. Um, some of it's hollow, of course, because you've got a windpipe going up in the middle of it. Um, and um, this, this um, push cut followed by a draw cut requires actually very little technique, it's relatively simple. Um, and I know people who practice skillet arms um, using weapons on horseback, um, and they, I've seen them demonstrate this against you know, melons and pumpkins and, and things like this, and, and straw bales as well. Um, and it, it doesn't seem to be that difficult to do, and it's a very effective attack. So there is an option that is a thrust-like attack but given with the edge, and thereby is perhaps a safer attack than the attack with the point. Thank you.